How to cut your monthly bills in half. Believe it or not, it's possible to cut your monthly bills in half. Want to find out how to take advantage of these extreme savings? Keep watching to find out. Number one, reduce insurance premiums. This is an additional way to lower your bills and while it's effective, there's much more you can do, which I'll share with you shortly. Reducing your insurance premium is essentially increasing the amount you'd have to pay if an emergency came, but reducing the cost per month. For example, raising your deductible from $500 to $1,000 can already drop your premium by 25%. Not bad, right? Bonus tips, another fantastic method to lower your insurance costs to hit that 50% mark is to be part of an organization like AAA, which always looks good to insurance companies. You can also get better deals if you have a solid track record for being a good driver. This amplifies when you drive older cars as well. Lastly, you can reduce your rates by bundling insurance together. For example, look for companies that will give you both car and home insurance. Nine times out of 10, you'll pay less than having two separate insurances. Number two, consolidate debt. Debt consolidation is extremely useful to cut down debt and to actually pay less overall. The way it works is that you'd take high interest debt like credit cards and combine them into one monthly payment through a source that has much less interest than a credit card, which hovers between 16 to 30%. One of the great things about debt consolidation is that you only have to make one payment as opposed to trying to stay on top of several and you get lower interest rates, which ultimately lets you pay off debts way faster. Typically, you'll take out a debt consolidation loan from a bank or credit union, but this may be hard if you don't have a good credit score. Make sure you do due diligence before acting on debt consolidation, but regardless, it can drastically reduce your monthly bills. Number three, track your spending. There's no way around it, Tracking your spending is something you're going to have to learn to do if you want to reduce your monthly bills in half. Naturally, knowing how much money goes and comes out of your account will give you the best vision as to what you can cut to actually reduce your costs. Tracking your spending isn't a direct way to lower your bills, but it will give you insight into what can be cut down. For example, you may notice your grocery bills are really high with a little creativity and research, you can find out ways to cut that bill down so you can lower your general expenses. Tracking your spending isn't always the easiest thing, but it can be easy if you subscribe to Investors Weekly and check out our videos. There's tons of amazing content already and new videos released every day that can help you become a personal finance expert propelling you into financial independence. Number four, shop at cheaper grocery stores. It shouldn't be a surprise that one of the biggest expenses of the average person is food. You probably already know that cutting out your takeout will dramatically reduce your monthly bills, but if you're someone who only eats at home, what can you do? The first thing you can do is make sure the stores you're buying from are actually well-priced. One of the cheapest and best stores to grocery shop at is Aldi. You'll get fantastic prices here and know that your food is good quality. However, even if you shop at Aldi, you can still get sidetracked and go over budget. The problem with grocery shopping is that it is a very sneaky expense, considering that it's directly related to our need to survive. So the mindset of having more means I'll be able to survive longer becomes more prevalent. This isn't an easy thing to curb, so I have the challenge to ensure that you can help reduce your monthly bills in half. Every single morning, Make the first thoughts present in your head that you are in control of your body, mind, and your money. You get to choose how to spend, and that means you don't have to spend more on groceries. Stick to your plan, stick to your list, and you'll be just fine. Number five, refinance your mortgage. Mortgages are an expense that you'll likely pay for a few decades depending on the period of payment you got. For new buyers, it's usually over a 30-year period, but this can easily change depending on your financial position. While this tip may not be the most useful right now since interest rates are very high, when the opportunity arises and interest rates start lowering again, 
refinance your mortgage so you can get a much cheaper price to pay back every month. This is especially useful for those who are looking to pay down their home quickly. Essentially, refinancing your mortgage is getting a third party or even a bank to give you a new loan that you pay directly to them. This usually means a smaller interest rate, but someone is directly benefiting from your payments, making it a win-win situation. Number six, give homemade gifts or cards. Gifts are one of those hidden expenses that become very apparent during specific times of the year. One of the most notable cases is, of course, the winter holidays. You can go from having a solid budget to suddenly being way over just because Christmas rolls around and you have to get gifts for your family. Fortunately, this can be easily avoided. Yes, it's a bit more work to make your own gifts or cards, but the work you put in will not only reward you by making the gift receiver so happy to have a gift or card made from the heart, but also make you happy by saving you tons of money. Let's face it, even with Amazon and some of the most amazing prices, gifts aren't cheap. But what if you're someone who really has no talent or time to make gifts? Bonus tip, there are two things you can do. First, make every single day of the year a day that you can buy gifts for the holidays. What I mean is that if you see a sale for an item that you know would be an excellent gift for someone, buy it then and save it until later. This goes a very long way for not having to blow hundreds of dollars in one month. The second thing is to set a gift price limit. That means every person on your list will have a fixed gift price. For instance, if you set your gift limit to $10 and you have 10 people to get gifts for, you'll only spend $100. Now that's pretty impressive. Number seven, shop secondhand. It's common to think that shopping secondhand just means clothes and old furniture, but it reaches far beyond that. But before I get into that, it should be mentioned how much you can reduce your bills if you shop secondhand. For example, if you have young kids that are going in and out of clothes like no tomorrow, then buying clothes secondhand can reduce the amount you spend on that by easily 50%, if not more. If we take a simple t-shirt, you can expect to pay about $4. However, in a thrift store, expect the price to be closer to 50 cents or $1. Now, when you're buying several of these a month, it makes a huge difference, right? The other thing that comes with kids is keeping up with technology. Fortunately, you can take advantage of perfectly useful technology for a much cheaper price. The two words you want to add to your vocabulary and keep an eye out for are refurbished and open box. For example, a refurbished iPhone 11 on a reputable computer and tech website, newegg.com, costs $289 and a new one costs around $499. And in the case of a 2021 MacBook Pro, you can save close to $400 just because the box was opened without the computer being used. So you see, new doesn't always mean better. After you watch the last tip, let us know in the comments below what are your favorite ways to cut your monthly bills in half. If we didn't miss any and taught you some great tricks, then give the video a thumbs up to show your appreciation. Number eight, review subscriptions and memberships. It's unlikely that you don't have at least one subscription or membership currently, whether that be some show or movie streaming service or music. However, with how easy it is to sign up for memberships and subscriptions, it can be easy to get lost in what you're currently subscribed to. The first step is to audit your subscriptions to see whether you have any automatic payments you don't want to make. Chances are you'll have one or two that you can easily get rid of. That alone will already drop your monthly bill by a lot. The second step is to filter out what subscriptions or memberships you really use. You'll need to be honest with yourself here. If the answer isn't a resounding yes, then it's best to cancel the membership in the meantime. An excellent way to keep subscriptions and memberships that matter to you is to avoid automatic renewal. The reason is that it forces you to renew the membership yourself. If it's something you don't care about, you'll likely forget and not renew it. But if it's something that matters to you, you'll go out of your way to renew it again and again. <laughs> 